Hello, my name is Father Sean Morris. I'm the rector here at Our Lady of Grace Seminary in Boston, Massachusetts. Right here behind me is Boylston Street. It's one of the main thoroughfares that go right through the city here in Boston. And it's where Our Lady of Grace Seminary is located, um, right in the Back Bay area. Um, and just a couple of blocks behind me, that direction is Fenway Park, uh, famous for the Boston Red Sox. And today I'd like to take you on a tour of our seminary so you can get a chance to see uh, what it looks like, both the places that are public and the places that are uh, a bit more private, what we would call cloistered areas of the seminary that not too many people get a chance to see. So why don't we take a look inside. Coming in through the front doors of the seminary, you enter into kind of our front hallway. Um, over on the left, we have a little room that we use for uh, educational purposes, meetings, and so forth. Um, and then off to the right here, which is where we will be going, is a door into the main shrine, St. Clement's Eucharistic Shrine. Uh, right behind me here is where all of our seminarians, priests, and brothers get together every day, morning, and in the evening to pray the Liturgy of the Hours, um, and we celebrate Mass here. This is also a Eucharistic shrine for the city of Boston in which people can come and adore our Lord in the Eucharist um, pretty much 24 hours a day. Here is the sacristy for the shrine. Um, this is where you'll find all of our vestments. Here we have the vestments for the seminarians, the cassocks and the surpluses that they use. The albs and the diaconate vestments. And finally, the priests' vestments, the chasubles, um, are located in here. The door that we just came through from the shrine is a private door. Um, this is directly probably about I'd say 20, 20 feet or so from the first student's room. And so this is a place where only our seminarians in our community um, accesses the rest of our building. As you see, we're already in our students' rooms here. We have normal things you'd expect in kind of a dormitory setting. We have our showers here um, and off to the right here are restrooms. You can take a look and see what a typical seminarian's room looks like. They have simply a bed, a desk where they study, a bookcase. There's a little sink. It makes it a little bit nicer for um, getting ready in the morning. You don't have to wait for a bathroom to open up in terms of brushing your teeth or uh, shaving, that sort of thing. And then a little closet area for your clothes. As you go down the hallway towards the end, you find the rector's bedroom, which is mine, right here, and then take a turn and there's several more uh, bedrooms and showers this end of the hallway as well, and another stairwell that goes on up to our library. As we continue on up the stairs, I'll show you the next floor, which is mostly students' rooms, but there is one little surprise that's a little bit different, and I'll take you to that right now. Here we have a little private chapel strictly for our seminarians, so they can come in here whenever they want. Um, if there's some sort of function going on in the church and they just want some quiet time with Jesus, they can come in here. Sometimes uh, we'll have a private mass in here for the students if there's some sort of special uh, activity or thing that um, we're doing. And so it's a nice place for the guys to come in. They can be quiet and spend some good quality time with, with our Lord here. And they don't have to go very far to get here. As we continue on up to the last floor of this side of the building here, which would be uh, the side of the building that we have all our students living in, you end up in our library. And this is a place where the guys will get together, they'll meet, they'll uh, study. You can see we have a pretty decent collection of 
theological books here, um, spiritual books and so forth, so we don't necessarily always have to go to the big libraries over at Boston College to find some of the things that we need here. Probably one of the more important rooms, I would say, of a seminary. If you look out these windows, um, this is the courtyard for our community here. Uh, the building directly across is a building which houses most of the rooms for our perpetually professed members in the community, so priests and brothers, as well as some offices. And later on, we'll see uh, the gym, which is down there at the bottom. Um, and then off to the left, that's the shrine, so St. Clement's Eucharistic Shrine that we were just uh, walking through. All right, I've showed you the upper floors here, this side of the building. Now let's go all the way to the bottom and see what's there. Um, a few of our guys really enjoy uh, bicycling, and so we have uh, a few bicycles here that guys will take out. Um, you can ride around through some of the many trails and things that we have here in uh, Massachusetts. Um, actually, there's a lot of great places to bicycle here in the state. And then, as we come through here, we will find ourselves in our seminarian's lounge. This is where the guys will get together often for community meetings. Um, we have a, a tradition of doing a Saturday evening movie. Uh, so one of the guys will pick out a movie and then we'll, they'll come in here and watch that together um, in the afternoons. Continuing on our journey, we walk through here and we can take a look at our courtyard. Um, this is the courtyard that we've been looking at through all those windows. As you can see, there's uh, a lot of beautiful plants and things. A uh, place to sit down and relax, often in nice weather, pray in the mornings or in the evenings, um, or get together uh, for a good meal uh, when the weather permits, which in the summertime is pretty frequently. One of the prominent features of the courtyard that you really can't miss is our statue of our founder, uh, Father Lanteri here. Um, who is famously holding the sign that says Mariam Kojita, Mariam Invoca. Uh, think of Mary, invoke Mary. As we continue on down to the very bottom here, we get into one of our kind of big ballrooms. When I was a seminarian, this is actually where we would uh, have our meals at dinner time and uh, different functions sometimes throughout the year parties and things now is what we usually have happening down here. This is, by the way, directly underneath the shrine. So uh, that church that we walk through is right above our heads here. Um, and interesting, this fencing in front of us here um, was the grating that was used when sisters were here. We had some cloistered sisters and of course the cloistered sisters have a grate that separates them from the public. And that was the grating that was used for the sisters. So when we took over the shrine here, uh, we repurposed that. And of course, a room this, bo this big would, uh, would be out of place if it didn't have another statue of our founder here, uh, this time in bronze. Continuing on here, as so we come through, go through a side hall, and we end up down in probably one of the more popular places in the seminary, which is what we call our small refectory. Oh, turn the lights on here. So this is where we now have our meals. Um, this is where everybody will gather. This is where the food is at. So snacks, coffee, um, basically anything that you would want to drink or eat to help keep you up, help you be in top performance for prayer, for study, for whatever you happen to be doing. That's where the guys are coming is right here. Um, and we moved it from the large refectory because it's a little bit more intimate space. Uh, so we don't feel like we're sitting in such a big room. This is our kitchen. Um, off to the left is a pantry where we keep most of our food. Uh, this is a place also where as a seminarian, you're gonna probably spend quite a bit of time, whether it's cleaning up after meals, so cleaning the dishes, putting food away, but also um, one of the things that our seminarians do here is prepare meals, especially on Saturdays. Uh, we do have a regular cook that uh, cooks most of our meals for us, but on Saturdays, uh, it's the seminarians. And so 
Um, we usually typically have quite a few pretty good meals because the guys coming in um, are generally pretty good cooks. And if they're not, they learn because there's enough guys who know how to cook here who can teach the next guys that are coming in. Let's make our way across the, ref the large refectory here, as we like to call it, and uh, head over to two other little kind of unique places, I think, here in the seminary. Now this room is a room that I think that probably most people wouldn't think that we would have as a seminary. Um, but it's here, and that is a barber shop. I can't tell you how old this barber chair is. It was here long before I entered as a seminarian, and uh, somebody, I think, donated it to us. But it makes for a good uh, barber shop kind of feel and look to this place, I think. Um, there's a few of our guys who have taken a little knack at being the barber and uh, do a pretty good job, I think. As you go through the barber shop, if you get back here a little further, it kind of looks like you're moving more and more into a dungeon, kind of the deep parts of St. Clement's Eucharistic Shrine. Um, and if you come down here, one of the rooms that you end up at is our shop. This room was really important back in the 90s when this whole shrine was being renovated um, and renewed. And so a lot of work got done here um, with cutting wood, doing all sorts of stuff here. And so this is kind of what's left after it. Uh, most of the work that we do here in terms of taking care of the place is done by our guys. Um, and so we have the tools and the things necessary to pretty much fix, replace, or make whatever it is that we might need to, might, might need to make. And it seems like there's always a guy who has some sort of specialty that's able to kind of use these things um, and uh, get the job done that needs to get done. Here we have our little game room, um, little foosball table, lots of board games and things. Uh, guys will often pull some of these things out uh, during rec time um, just to let off a little steam sometimes, just have a little fun. As we leave the barber shop, move into the next very popular room here in the seminary, which is our gym. So as you can see here, we have a pretty nice gym, I think. Um, we don't have all the latest and greatest gadgets or things, but we pretty much have almost anything you could think of to exercise, to, to work on whatever muscle it is that you're wanting to get stronger or um, whatever mile, extra mile you're trying to run. I mentioned in the, in the workshop that we have a lot of talented guys that are able to do a bunch of different things. Here's one of the examples actually. Uh, the circuit board, everything on this clock, this timer here, uh, was made by one of our seminarians, uh, designed and built by him. And then as you look out the windows here in the, from the gym, we should see something now that looks pretty familiar to you in our tour here, which is our courtyard. So now we're looking on the other side, um, up to the windows of the rooms for the students and up there at the very top, uh, the windows of the library. One of the other popular rooms here in the seminary is what we call our music room. Um, it's also a place where we have a library of books uh, for our visitors for come and see uh, men who are discerning vocations with us. Uh, they're free when they come in to take any of these publications from uh, a number of our priests and brothers um, that have written all of these books here. Um, and then we have our musical instruments and things in here too for uh, the guys that are musically talented. They can come in here and practice, uh, play the guitar, banjo, all sorts of stuff in here um, and not be disturbing others with all the noise. Um, through this door here is actually my office. And so I'll meet a lot of my seminarians here for uh, our one-on-one -on -one meetings just to check in and see how things are going with everybody um, and get some of the work done that I need to do. Right next to my office, you'll find our classroom. The classroom here is where uh, we'll have some of our, some of our students studying 
with instructors that we will hire sometimes uh, to teach our mostly our philosophy courses. Um, so myself here, I took a number of uh, courses um, actually with Dr. Peter Kreeft when he was uh, still doing that privately. The back here is a lot of our textbooks for our philosophy courses um, or the pre-theology courses that are necessary on those steps uh, towards entering theology and then, of course, uh, priestly ordination. And that is our Lady of Grace Seminary and St. Clement's Eucharistic Shrine. If you're interested in discerning with us and seeking out more information with regards to a vocation with the Oblates of the Virgin Mary, um, you can find all the information you need at omvusa.org.